So hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now you join me today out riding the bike. Yes, it's my favourite bike. It's got rim brakes and we're out to do the first review of the Fast Sports top tier carbon clincher wheel set, the Fast Sports Von 2 series. In particular, this is the S6, so that's the deepest version. And I've chosen it in rim brake variety to give it the, the toughest test. So I've done about 1000k on them now. I'm going to bring you my thoughts. So let's have a look. Now just a little note on Fast Sports if you're not so familiar with them. They're one of the oldest brand to consumer wheel companies coming in from Xiamen in China. Not to mention being an OEM for many other brands, so they're brand to brand as well. And I've personally been buying rims off them for about the last eight years actually. Ranging from 38mm lightweight builds to 88mm deep rims for the TT bike. Now the good thing about buying the rim only is that you get a really good feel for the production quality. So I'm talking about roundness, spoke hole alignment, interior finish, etc. And I'll just say this about carbon production and rims in particular, with a very stiff, deep carbon rim, kind of anything over 38, 40 millimeters, it's very hard to radially true it if it's out of round. So that means it has to come out of the mold pretty damn perfect and not egg shaped. With a shallow aluminum rim or something like that, you can easily kind of control egg shaped or ovality with manipulation of the spokes by you know pulling it into round with a spoke tension with a very deep carbon rim it's so its section is so stiff that it's very hard to fix out of round um, after it's come out of the mold so a testament to fast sports i've always found their wheels very round and they don't really need any real radial true um, when you start building the wheels up so that's a good tick in my box now just whilst we're on the topic of wheel building i've got a whole series of wheel building on my channel which i'll link to here some of the videos um, featuring the same rims uh, I've ridden and raced for for about the last 25,000 K or last four years. Now the precursor to the wheels I'm riding now are the 50 millimeter rims that I built up myself with Dura-Ace and Bitex hubs. I've been riding those, like I said, for about the last four and a half years. And I put them through the same big stiffness test as the Windspace Hypers, which have a carbon spoke construction, very similar to these Von 2 wheels. So if you want to go and check that out, I'll put a link to that there. Um, the Von 2 wheels that we're looking at now have a very similar construction to the Windspace Hypers, carbon spokes, similar rim and same number of spoke counts more or less. So we found in that video that the carbon spokes really do add lateral stiffness to the tune of about 35% over the similar depth rim built with Sapin CX ray spokes. So I'll put the results up here and I'll put those links in like I said. Now as a loyal Fast Sports customer over the years I guess and um, with the channel gaining traction Fast Sports have actually asked me to review this flagship wheel set, the Von 2 S series. And in particular, I've got the S6 version here, which is 60 millimeter deep, or 55 millimeter deep, actually. And because rim brakes demand a tougher test of the rim construction than the disc version, I requested that they send me the rim brake version to test, not the disc brake version. Um, the best rim brake carbon clinches I've ridden, particularly in the wet and in terms of braking performance, are Zips. So I wanted to compare these against the zips, particularly for wet braking. And like I said, the extra demand of the rim brakes is why I requested this one to test, because it's very, I'm not saying it's easy to make a clincher for disc brakes, but you take away that thermal problem, you take away that unsupported uh, wall and the squeezing of the brake pads and everything, you take, that's kind of taken away. So opted for the rim brake version. And like I said, this is my favorite bike, the rim brake bike. So this is why I've tested this one. Now I do have a discount code if you want to use it. The channel's integrity, as you know, is based on decent engineering and value for money. Thus, I really only feature stuff like this if I really rate it in terms of performance and yeah, good value for money. Um, YouTubers like myself get numerous offers of stuff to test for free, most of which, I'll be honest, I ignore at the email stage. So if it's on the channel, it's because you know I do rate it and I think it's a good product. So it's there if you want it, you don't have to use it, but I'll leave a link in the description. Now starting off with the hubs, Fast Sports are now designing their own hubs. Um, it's a custom hub for the carbon spoke. They also do this wheel set with non-carbon spokes and the hubs are slightly different. But let's take a little look more into the hub design here, particularly the ceiling, because I'm really surprised at how well they've done the ceiling on this. It's probably the best sealed road hub I've seen on a kind of performance lightweight wheel set. So let's just move to this little segment now to look a bit closer at the hubs. So let's have a little strip down, have a little look. First of all, you've got this basically this plastic cosmetic cap just to hide the straight pull heads. And actually, you can take that off. It doesn't really serve a function. 
if you want to take it off you can um, it just pops off then you can see the straight ball heads of the carbon spokes now why do I like this well the root of the heads on the carbon spokes is really deep so there's a lot of material outside the tension area of each spoke so you'll never get these hub flanges snapping under tension like you know sometimes on very lightweight hubs you've got maybe j-bend or straight pull spokes or above the head is very little material whereas this the root of the spoke is really deep into the material there's lots of material outside of that tension area it's actually quite a simple hub to machine because you've got okay you need to kind of CNC turn the middle section of the hub where it's fluted and hourglass shaped but on the end it's just a 2D milling it's just straight up and down it's just X and Y milling of these pockets basically yeah that ease of machining doesn't help you the consumer but it tells me that it's been designed by a good engineer because they think of not just the end product but they think of how easy it is for them and their machinists their tooling time programming time um, and that's just a sign of good engineering it's called design for manufacture so that's nice to see as well it's a, it's a good point it doesn't really help the consumer but it's really nice to see so let's look at the other really good thing about this hub design and like i said it's probably one of the best sealed hubs i've ever seen on on a road bike so I've already loosened this end cap. Now the end caps are threaded, not push on, like we see on a lot of uh, hubs. And they've really gone to town with the sealing of these. So realize they've got, you know, a lot of European customers, Northern European customers, a lot of customers now that are riding the bikes in really bad weather conditions and winter conditions, and they've gone to town on the sealing of these hubs with a really good style labyrinth sealing. So the first thing you can notice on the end cap, which is threaded, is this double flange which works as a, la a like a labyrinth seal and these flanges are very finely tolerant to the ID of the hub shell so they don't contact but they're very close and the ID of the hub shell is greased with a maintenance grease and that will form a very very thin grease contact or seal between these flanges and the ID of the hub shell and then you can see inside the hub shell itself before you've even got to the first bearing there is a lip seal <clears throat> which seals on the end cap so you've got two kind of labyrinth style mechanical seals here then a lip seal and then the seals of the bearing itself so may not be the lowest friction running hub but in terms of service you know service life those bearings have got a very good chance of being weatherproof so I would particularly recommend this hub design and wheel set if you're riding in winter conditions and you want to ride a special wheel set all through winter and on grimy roads this has been thought out extremely well and you don't see this level of sealing often on such a lightweight high performance hub set or a wheel set so it's actually very impressive I'm genuinely quite impressed by that it's really nice to see and the quality of this machining, the threaded parts, it is not cheap to make stuff like this. Um, the anodizing is flawless. The flanges are very finely tolerant to the idea of this. And yeah, to have that extra lip seal in there is really nice. Another nice feature about this is when you've got a 5mm hex socket in that end cap and one on the other side, to get the other one off, they've very cleverly notched the idea of this axle to fit in a 12 millimeter, I think it's 12 millimeter Allen key, and that's how you get the other one off. So it's just a really nice feature. They've just machined in a couple of notches, just enough to get the Allen key in. Um, and it's not adding any material, it's not adding any weight, but it's adding function. So that's really well <laughs> designed and thought out. I like that a lot. And the other really good thing about this is may not be optimum for stiffness, but they've recessed the bearings inboard slightly to keep the bearing seat away from the radial pulling of the spoke. So these spokes are under maybe you know 110 kilos of tension each, which will all add up and radially pull, pull outwards on this area of the hub. Now, what you can sometimes get with very lightweight hub flange designs is if the bearing is directly under this tension area from all the spokes pulling outwards, you can actually pull the bearing seat diameter slightly out of tolerance. By recessing the bearing slightly further in outside of this pulling area, it doesn't really matter how much tension you put on this flange because the bearing seat is axially offset. 
it's not going to affect the bearing tolerance too much although maybe has a slight negligible effect on stiffness but it's a 17 millimeter axle so stiffness is very good again on the rear wheel ceiling is really well dealt with we've got a large lip seal on the main hub body and then another static lip seal press fit into the end of the free hub body so all the bearings are pretty well protected before the dirt and water even gets to the bearing seals themselves an extra line of added defence and I must admit the grease that these come with is quite heavy grease actually so they've really gone to town on the kind of waterproofing of these hubs it should serve you well if you are running in really grimy wintry conditions hub shell on the rear not the lightest of machinings, there's quite a lot of material left on that hub shell but the assembly pattern of the spokes, the two cross spokes was perfectly tangential so no wind up on the spokes, no torsional wind up on the spokes no bend in the heads, perfectly tangential there are dual bike guards on the free hub body 180 apart but to be honest, I think if you talk your cassette up to 40 newton meters, which not many people actually do, I've never really needed bite guards, I've never really had a problem with cassette biting if the cassette is properly taught. If the cassette's not properly taught, these bite guards definitely help you out. Now, the axles, like I said, are a through type solid axle um, running on 17 mil ID bearings, so that's 6803 and 6903, so that gives you a very stiff bearing setup because the axle is going all the way through it's not done with tube spacers which is commonly done and it's particularly a big axle for our QR free hub so it doesn't surprise me if they're using those bearings uh, in common with the disc brake hub set as well so good big bearings big diameter axle give you a very stiff bearing setup moving on to the spokes well they've got the same construction to what we see on the wind space or the hunt wheels with the tapered locked in spoke ends and kind of compression molded carbon bladed spokes so there's no risk of debonding of the ends at the nippled ends um, but I definitely think these are now coming from a different supplier so the original Fast Sports Von 2s, the Windspace and the Hunts all had quite a common serial number marking on the wheels uh, these lack that and the straight pull ends near the hub look to have slightly different finish a slightly different anodizing to the nipple so I think they may have changed supplier but the width and the thickness of the spoke and you know the mechanical principle of the spoke is exactly the same but I think they might have moved for a different supplier but I've only done about a thousand K on them so far so I can't comment too much now you won't get any clicking from the rear two cross spokes because they've designed the hub with a geometry that means that they just don't touch there is actually an air gap between the spokes so there's no rubbing fretting or clicking coming from these because carbon is a much stiffer material and the section is a little bit bigger than a steel spoke um, there's less inherent stretch in these carbon spokes than a sapim steel spoke for the same given tension now why is that bad well if you're designing something not to rattle loose like a bolt or a fastener in tension you tend to use a very long bolt or a thin diameter bolt or something with a next portion so there's a bit of inherent spring and stretch in there and that helps things stop vibrating loose these carbon spokes are so stiff, sometimes they can kind of come loose over time. Um, so I think the companies now are starting to use maybe Loctite on the nipples, or I know Windspace in particular are um, changing the geometry of the spoke head a little bit to stop it, or to stop it trying to rotate. Um, but because I've only ridden about 1000K on these, um, I can't comment too much yet, but it'll be a good test over time. And the other thing to note about these is in the box there are no spare spokes included whereas the wind space ones you do get a few carbon spokes but i've spoken to fast sports and said was this an error and they said no we don't generally include the spares but you can request them if you want them i'm not sure how much they're going to charge though now the real acid test for me is the rims now this shape of rim is actually quite old um, fast sports have been using this more or less the same shape for a long time they're 19 millimeters internal and 26 millimeters external and they are tubeless ready so there's the tubeless groove in the middle and they're hooked which is a good thing um, don't go onto hookless rims that's a topic for another day but um, it's a shape they've used for quite a long time it's almost the same as my old 50 mil wheel set that which i built with fast sports rims but it's still pretty modern it's uh, fairly wide internal and 26 external for a, a road racing bike like a light road bike like this it's pretty much optimum i would say and i don't anything i don't 
kind of get the massive wide trend. I don't really like that. Um, I don't run anything bigger than a 25 or a 28 tire, so this is pretty ideal. It's got a very good quality spoke bed, I'm shining the torch in here, I had a little look in there before I put the tire on. And there's a, a toe or a ribbon of glass fibre in there to protect the drillings. Um, there's a raised lip for the valve hole, which is nice to see. So you can screw that valve down nice and snugly with a Prester lock nut. So you're not going to get any rattles. And in fact, I don't actually need it. Like the valve is quite tight fit in that hole anyway. I haven't actually suffered from any rattling. But if you do, that raised lip is nice for the lock nut. Um, but one thing to note is that in the box there weren't any tubeless valves so if you want to run them tubeless you need your own valves. And that brings me on to the braking performance. How is the braking performance? And I have to say they're pretty much on par with the zips that I've tested in the wet and the dry. I think in the dry these are probably a bit better. That may be to do with the, the brake pads that they come with. They're kind of Fastport's own grey coloured brake pads. In the wet they really do they're probably one of the best carbon clinches I've ever tested in the wet. And I definitely think that's got something to do with the machine grooves in the edge of the rim. Now they call it a brachistochrone curve and it's supposed to be the fastest shape to dissipate water off the edge of the rim. I can't test that. There's no way I can test that. That's a little bit kind of pseudo bro science as one of my mates would say. Um, but it sounds good. <laughs> and I just, but to be honest, I think the ridges in the rim just increase the friction coefficient between the rim and the pad. It's probably a bit less kind to the brake pad, but if you have to change the brake pads a bit more often, they're dead cheap to replace compared to disc brake pads. Um, I'm all for that to have the added brake power. Now, the one thing I would say about these, these machine grooves is that they're very, very, very shallow compared to something like a zip. The machining in the zip wheels, the grooves in the edges of the zip wheels are much deeper, they're much more pronounced, and I just wonder how long these grooves are gonna last on the fast sports wheels. I just don't know why they just didn't do it a little bit deeper. They're so shallow, it's almost like they haven't been machined. It's like they've been kind of laser etched or something with a laser etching machine. Um, the grooves are so small, I just don't know why they didn't make them a little bit deeper because I can see in another maybe thousand or two kilometers they might wear out, but that's just me being skeptical. I may be wrong um, and I will update you on that as I use them more and more. But in total, um, really impressed very very similar to the hyper rim um, rim brake wheel set which i've also got i can't really split them between the two i think the profile of this is a little bit aer more aerodynamic than the wind space but that's just all conjecture on my part i can't test them i don't have a you know i've not tested them back to back and it's impossible to test something that small and difference wise in the wind tunnel if you ask me um so pff, I can't really split hairs between the two. Um, but there we go. Hope you enjoyed that review. That's the Fastsports Vontu S6.